Welcome to the participation project video for the Excel Basics Project West Virginia Mining Problem. For this project, you're going to need to go to your instructor's website and view the assignment page for this project. You'll see here that we have instructions posted and you'll want to have these handy. And there also are data files that are posted for this assignment. Most of the participation projects this semester will have data files for you to work with. I'm going to go and save the files by right-clicking and I'll tell it to save link as and I'm going to go and save these to my desktop so that they're easy to find. I'll keep my browser window open so that I have access to my instructions but now I want to go to the desktop where I went and saved those files. So this is the files that I download here. It's a zip file and I need to go and extract its contents before I'm able to use any of the files that are inside of it. In this case there's actually a couple different files here. I'm going to right click on the file and tell it to extract all and then I can just allow the default location that's populated and go ahead and click the extract button. You can see when you're done that there is an XML file, two CSV files, and a Microsoft Access ACC DB file that's in the data files for this particular project. Because of the access file, you will need to use a Windows version of Microsoft Office to complete this project. You cannot do it with Excel for Mac. If you look in the instructions under step one, you'll be able to see information about all of the data files that were included in the zip that we just extracted. So we have a description of what the file is and the data that it contains. So we have information on columns here, what type of data they store, and a description of what that particular set of data represents. And there's these tables for each of the different files, and in this case actually an access query, that we're going to be importing. It's helpful to go and take a look at these lists as you go and start to work on projects, because they're going to help you identify where you need to pull the data from in order to go and complete the assignment. Let's start creating our file by making a new workbook. On the Start menu, I'm going to go ahead and open up Excel, and I'm going to choose that I want to create a blank workbook. Before we go and do anything else, I'm going to save my file. This way, I'll make sure that I have my file name correctly, and it's going to be easy that I can go and save my progress as I work through the assignment. I don't have to worry about accidentally closing or having the computer crash or something and losing work that way. To go ahead and save my file, I'll click on the save the icon, the floppy disk, up at the very top of the screen. And here I'm getting backstage view, which appears in newer versions of Office. I'm going to choose to save my file to the desktop so that it's easy for me to find. So I need to go and choose that location. Sometimes the location you want might be on this list here, but in my case it's not. So I'm going to go to More Locations, which will open up this Save As window here, and I'm going to Browse, and I'm going to choose to go to the desktop. I want to name my file as listed in the instructions, which is mining underscore ppeb underscore wvmp.xlsx. This file name uh, and contains a code that identifies what project this is. So this is the Participation Project Excel Basics WV Mining Problem. As you work on homeworks and exams, the file name that's listed in the instructions is going to have a space for last name and first name. You should put your last name and first name there in that space. But I'm going to go ahead and save. And now I have my file created. and. It's empty right now, but it is saved under the correct name. Next, I'm going to set up the sheets that I need for this workbook. By default, we have Sheet 1, and I'm going to rename this. I can go and right-click on the tab for the sheet and go to Rename that way to do this. I'm going to call this Coal Mind. I need to add a couple additional sheets. For each of the sheets, I'm just going to click this plus button, which will add a new sheet. The other way that I can go and rename a sheet is just by double clicking on its name and that will also allow me to type in a new name. So this sheet I want to call prices, 
then we'll have total values projections and finally analysis questions when you finish adding new sheets before you go on to the next step you want to be careful that you go and look at the instructions and see what sheet you're supposed to be working on a lot of times what ends up happening is students will just continue on doing the work for the next step but they didn't actually go to the correct sheet so you know you might uh, for example start importing data which is going to be our next step but do it to analysis questions which is not where that data is supposed to go so just take a moment to make sure that you're in the right place before you move on and that can save yourself a little bit of hassle later on for the next step I'm going to import data into my coal mine sheet so I'm going to go ahead and click on its tab and then I'm going to click on cell A3 because that's where we're going to import the data according to the instructions. I'm going to import from an XML file so I'm going to choose its option by going to the data ribbon clicking get data from file and from XML. I need to make sure that I am in the folder where I've extracted the data files so here I'm on the desktop this is the folder where my files are and there's only one XML file, this coalmine.xml. That's the one I want. So I'm going to double click on it. That's going to open up this navigator window. And you can see here I have the coalmine.xml file. And if I click in there, there's basically one table called coalmine. It's going to show me here on the right side of the window a preview of the data that's in that file so I can see the different column headings and then I can see the different values that are in those columns data looks good but I need to tell Excel that I want to stick it in cell A3 and not on a new sheet so I can do that by clicking on the little down arrow next to the load button and choosing load 2 I want to bring in my data as a table down the bottom here though I'm going to put the data in an existing worksheet and since I clicked in cell A3 it's pre-populated that cell in the cell selector box so I'll click OK. It's going to go ahead and bring in my data now and it did go and establish a connection with that file so it opens up the queries and connections pane and what we can actually do if we were to make changes to the file is we could go to the queries and connections pane and refresh the data and it would pull an updated version of the data from that file in our case we don't need to worry about that right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and click close and get out of that pane next we're gonna import data from two different CSV files CSV stands for comma separated values basically what it literally means is that the text is separated by commas CSV is an older file format but it's still very widely used for transferring data XML is the other predominant format that you'll see sometimes you'll also see things in what's called JSON format and that's a newer internet based format um, we're gonna focus mostly on XML and CSV here in CS 101 along with importing from access databases which we'll do shortly I'm going to go ahead over to the prices sheet because that's where our next import is going to happen. And we're going to import starting in cell A3 again. So I'll do that. Click there. I'm going to go to the data ribbon. And here, there's actually two different ways to get to my data. One way would be to go to get data, tell it from a file, and tell it that I want from text slash CSV. And here, I'm going to import from prices.csv so I'll double click on it and I'll see a window that's fairly similar to what I had with the XML file but there's some subtle differences the biggest difference is you know we just have this one table worth of data we don't have a little selector on the left side but notice this very first row where it has the column headings it doesn't have the columns that were in our file like it did with the XML file. Instead, it just has columns 1 through 11. The data that was in that very first row in the file, though, actually appears right below. 
what we want to do is we're going to transform this data to make this first row here that says county and region and those other values be the heading for our column. So I'm going to click on the transform data button. That'll open up Power Query Editor. And I just want to click here where it says use first row as headers. You'll see it took that first row, it bumped it up to be the headers. That's the only edit that I need to make to my data here. You can do a lot of other manipulation with data before you import it in this Power Query Editor window if you have a need for it. But in our case, we just want to make that first row be headers. I'm going to go over to where it says close and load and on the bottom this is going to load a menu. I'll tell it to close and load to and I'm going to bring in the data as a table to an existing worksheet starting in cell A3. So you can see we have the prices sheet now and the queries and connections pane now shows this prices table worth of data. Things are going to be pretty similar over on the total value sheet. I'll go over there. I'm going to import starting in cell A3 again, so I'll click on that. On the data ribbon though, I'm going to bring a CSV file in. Rather than going to the get data, I'm actually just going to use this shortcut that's right here on the ribbon. And that one that says from text slash CSV. Just lets me avoid a couple clicks that way and I'm going to import this time from totalvalues.csv so I'll double click on that and you can see my data preview has loaded up here and again the headings for the different columns are not what we would want so we're going to transform data and we'll tell it to use first row as headers for this data set as well we'll go back to the menu for close and load tell it to close and load too and we're going to tell it an existing worksheet starting in cell A3 and we'll click OK. You can see we have this data brought in now. Our next import is going to come from a Microsoft Access database and it's going to go on the projection sheet. So I'm going to head over to projections and this time I'm going to click in cell A5. A couple things that you need to be aware of when you're importing from an ACC DB Access database file. One of them is that you have to do this using Excel for Windows. There is no Mac support for Access databases, so you, you got to do this on Windows. The other thing is that you want to make sure that Microsoft Access is closed. You're going to run into some problems if you try to import from an Access database that is currently open. So just making sure that Access is closed helps to avoid that problem. To do the input here, I'm going to go to the data ribbon. I'll tell it that I want to get data, but this time I'm going to go to from database. Since this is an access database, I specifically need to go to that location. And as you can see, there's actually a lot of different types of databases that Excel can bring data from. Access is actually going to be one of the simpler ones. We'll tell it that we want to do from Microsoft Access Database. I'll double click on the projections.accdb file. and I have to select here what it is I want to bring in. There's two different things that's going to let me choose from. There's a table called forecasts, but the one that I'm actually interested in based on the instructions is this query called projections. When I click on it, I can see a preview of my data and everything looks in good shape. The column headings are correct. Don't need to transfer anything. So I'm just going to go and tell it to load to. I'm going to bring it in as a table on cell A5 of the existing worksheet. So we'll go ahead and click OK there. Since we're done with imports now, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the Queries and Connections pane. It shouldn't pop back up anymore. Continuing on, we need to go and edit some of the text that's stored in our workbook. We're going to start over on the coal mine sheet and I'm just going to go through the instructions and adjust the cells as listed. So in cell A1, I want to type in tons of coal mined per county, and then I'm going to go and hit enter. I'll click in cell C3, and I'm going to type in 1999. We're basically just stripping off the word tons. To go to the next column to the right, I can hit the tab key. We'll do 2004, tab 2009, tab 2014, 
tab 2019. That sheet's done. Let's go over to prices and we'll click in A1. We'll say coal prices by county and hit enter. Over on total values, we'll go back to A1 again and we're going to say total value of coal mined by county and hit enter. Projections is going to be a little bit more involved. In cell A1, I'm going to type in forecasts and then I'll hit enter twice which will take me down to cell A3. Here I'm going to type in scenario and then I'll hit enter and go down to A4 and I'm going to type in 2019-2024 production change rate colon and we'll tab over to B4 and I'm going to type in minus 18.0 percent. Now when I hit enter Excel is looking and sees a percent sign so it's actually going to internally treat this as a percentage as a number rather than text. The other thing that you should note is that since the text was too long to display entirely in column A from cell A4 and I have something in column B it's just kind of cutting off the text here with in terms of what's actually getting shown. That's just how Excel does things. We can go and resize columns and we'll do that later on just to make it so that we can see the full width of the text that we have there. Now let's go head over to the analysis question sheet and we'll get it ready for use. In cell A1 I'll type in question number and B1 is going to be response. To wrap up this project first we're going to make a copy of the projection sheet. To copy a sheet I'm going to right click on its tab and go to mover copy and since I want to make a copy I'm going to check the box that says create a copy. Here in the selector I need to tell it which sheet I'm going to place the new one before. So I want to place the new sheet before the existing projection sheet according to the instructions. So I'm going to tell it that I want to put it before projections and I'm going to create a copy and I'll click OK. And you can see that I now have this projections 2 and it looks identical to projections. The instructions tell me that I want to name this new sheet as forecasts. So I'll double click on the tab, change the name, and then I'm actually going to get rid of the original projection sheet. I'm going to right click on it and tell it to delete and then I just want to click delete once more to confirm that I do want to permanently delete the sheet. At this point we're done with the project. We're going to go ahead and save our work and I'm going to close Excel. It's a good practice to close whichever Microsoft Office application you're using before you go and submit your work. That makes sure that you there aren't any problems where you might have changes that you have forgotten to save that are in your file but aren't going to be in the upload copy because they haven't been saved. When you go to save the file if there's any changes that haven't been saved it'll prompt you and ask you if you want to save those changes. So closing out of things is just an insurance policy to make sure that you don't upload a blank file. Hopefully you've been able to follow along with this project fine. If you have any questions please contact your section instructor or visit CS101 Open Lab.